Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to River Church. I'm Pastor Randy. Most of you know me. Maybe all of you know me. If you don't know me, that perhaps means you're a first-time guest. And I want to tell you that we are glad you're here. Um, I'm glad everybody's here. Uh, but if you're a first-time guest, I know it's a little awkward coming to a new church. Um, I don't know if we have any today or not, but if you do, if you are, then uh, fill out this uh, connection card, hold on to it, and come find my wife Lydia and me at the back table after the service, and we will look forward to meeting you, and uh, my wife has a little gift for you. So if you're a first-time guest, come find us at the back table immediately following the service and bring us your connection card. Everyone else... Um, if you would fill it out carefully, if you would uh, let us know how we can pray for you. Pastor Billy and I use this every week uh, to, to, to pray for you. We like to say it's like a, a lifeline or a line of communication between us and you. And so if you'll just let us know uh, how you're doing, what's going on, we are committed to praying for you uh, on a regular basis. So let us know. Um, if you are not receiving church emails, which only go out about every not even every seven days, every probably 10 days. When we send out an email, it's pertinent, uh, it's important information. And so if you're not receiving those, if you would give us your, um, your, your contact information, we'll get you on the list. We don't uh, use it in a frivolous fashion. We don't give it to anyone else. Uh, we mostly use it um, not even for our email blast. We mostly use it just to hold on to so that if I need to get in contact with you one day for something important, I have that contact information. So we use it carefully. Yeah, so that's our connection card. If you are not a first-time guest, if you would just fold it and put it in the offering basket when it comes by later on, then that, will, that, that information will come directly to me, and it's confidential. Only Pastor Billy and I, Pastor Billy and I see that information. Okay, well, the big news is that in two weeks, we have our uh, 10th anniversary as a church. And um, boy, it's been really nostalgic. I have been going through hundreds of photos, many photos that you have sent me, but just a lot of photos that Lydia and I have of the last 10 years. And some of us uh, have seen our children uh, grow up from, from little munchkins to adults, in some cases, off, you know, out of town now. Uh, so it's been a, it's been a crazy 10 years. Uh, and uh, anyway, I've been looking through those photos and, 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 and uh, it's been somewhat emotional for me. Yesterday, I spent probably an hour just going through old photos of just seeing our different locations as a church over the last 10 years. See, see elders come up, uh, several elders move out of town to other, play, other parts of the country. Uh, see, you know, third graders, who are now, um, I don't know, whatever they are, that, that'd be, I think they'd be out of high school by now. Uh, see my kids grow up, see, see all, the, all of the different faces that I've baptized, many of you I've baptized over the last 10 years. So it's been good. I'm looking forward to, and it's been kind of emotionally purging even, I'm looking forward to two weeks from today uh, when we celebrate our, our 10th anniversary. Um, George and Josie, you know, are, are overseeing um, the different activities uh, that will happen that day. Um, one, of the, one of the important things gonna, that's going to happen that day uh, is we're going to have a potluck, which means we all bring food and we share it. Um, a potluck immediately following the service on September 11th. So today is really uh, an important day for you to sign up. If you wait till next Sunday, then we're going to be worried about whether or not we're not going to have enough food for the following Sunday and who's coming and who's bringing what. So it would be really, really good if you would, immediately following the service, see Molly. Molly, would you stand up for a second? Molly has a cat on her shoulder because uh, that's how we roll at River Church. Uh, anyway, that's Molly, and uh, if you would go see her, uh, she is elect she, she's going to electronically record uh, your name and what you are going to bring uh, for the potluck. And so if you'll see her, she knows the rules and she knows the details and she will let you know. But if you're willing to bring some food, then just go see her. You don't have to bring food for everybody. If you bring a little bit and I bring a little bit and everybody brings a little bit, then there will be enough for everyone. So it's not a terribly daunting task as long as we all participate. 
Uh, the, other, the other way that you can participate on Sunday is you can bring a guest, somebody who doesn't normally go to church, maybe somebody who's been out of church for a while, somebody who's looking for a church. I think that I think them, them um, joining us on our anniversary and seeing that, wow, this church has been around for 10 years and they love each other and they, um, they really uh, relate well to one another. Uh, who knows, your friend might decide that he or she would like to be a part of this community of faith as well. And so if you would begin, if you haven't already, begin thinking about who you could bring that day that they might celebrate with us. There are also some people floating out there who were a part of River Church prior to COVID and they haven't, they just haven't come back and they're just not going anywhere. And, and, and I know a few of them and you know a few of them. And those are people that I think are really ripe for our invitation as well. It's okay, to, it's okay to come back into the world and come back to church and, and, and rejoin our community. So if you would invite um, your friends on September 11th, that would be awesome. We're putting together a video collage that we're going we're gonna to enjoy on that day. Josie's working hard on that. What we need from you, if you haven't already done this, is we need a little 10-second video. You take your phone. This is called Landscape, I believe, and you record you... Uh, or you and your friend, or you and your wife, or you and your family, and you just wish River Church a happy 10th anniversary, about 15 seconds, and send it uh, to me, and uh, we will, uh, Josie's putting all that together as a collage, and we're going to watch that on Sunday, September 11th. Um, Also, if you have photos, I've received a lot of photos, but if you have some, I probably don't have a photo of you if you haven't sent it in. So if you would send us your photos, two or three or five or ten, probably no more than that, just your best photos of the last ten years, especially if you were baptized. Last thing, if you would like to be baptized on Sunday, September 11th, our, our anniversary, if you would put it on your connection card, I want to be baptized. Put it on your connection card with your name and turn it in today, and Pastor Billy or I will be in contact with you and we'll... We'll, get, we'll, we'll move you through that process so that you might be baptized on September 11th. I'm looking forward to that day. Like I said, it's been emotional for me in a good way, uh, but it's been, it's been emotional. So I'm, I'm looking forward to celebrating with you. I've invited, uh, I've invited people who don't normally come to River Church. I hope you'll do the same thing, that we might just have a really robust Uh, crowd, robust celebration on that day. If you would join me, let us pray. God, we've gathered here together today um, out of a real sense of, um, I'll use the word, desperate need to hear from you. Some of us feel it more deeply, some of us less, and yet For all of us, there is this deep, deep need to hear from you. It's in every one of us. So God, we ask that you would come, you would dwell among us today, you would move freely among us. God, I pray that you would speak prophetically through me. I've I've worked hard on this sermon, but but I'm certain there are things that you, Holy Spirit, have for me to say that I haven't even, even thought of yet. So would you empower this sermon? Would you, would you breathe in and through me as we, uh, as we study your precious word together? That we might leave here um, with our hearts recalibrated, with our hearts really beating more in line with your heart, oh God. That, that's, our, that's our desire. Would you do that? Would you move among us? We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, so last week I started uh, a, a really a three-week, I kind of hesitate to call it a sermon series, uh, but it's kind of that, uh, a three-week uh, series in which I invite you into my study. I invite you into uh, the, the space, that quite often it's out on the, the deck of my house, uh, outside. I invite you into this space uh, where I go to, to hear from the Lord, and where I go to study God's Word on a personal level, not for uh, sermon prep, not for counseling 
preparation just for my own soul where I go to be quiet before the Lord and hear from him. And so you guys know I'm like, like a number of you, I'm reading through the Bible this year and, and I, I am where I am. I'm a few days behind. But, but over the last month, what has the Lord been saying to me, speaking into my life? Over the last 24 hours, what has the Lord been saying to me and speaking into my life? That's what we're doing last week, this week, and next week in our sermon series. And so the question today is, I think we have it, the question really is, and we're going to be studying Isaiah 30, the question is, do I really, do I really trust in the Lord? Do I really trust in the Lord? And I ask you that, not, not wanting you to, answer out loud, but I ask you that question, wanting you to wrestle as, as I am, wanting you to wrestle with that question internally. Bless you. Um, for some of us, for some of us, I think the question might be, do I really trust the Lord or, or is it just like I'm just, I'm, I'm just killing it in life, you know? I'm just killing it in life, and so it's easy to sort of tack on to this amazing life that I have. You know, I, I'm tr I trust in the Lord, because life's going really well for me. And maybe for some of us, um, life is just all of a sudden, and perhaps in a very, uh, in a very recent, um, in a very recent way, maybe, maybe life has turned tragic. And so maybe on to that, with that as the backdrop, you have now said, I, I trust in the Lord, but it's a desperate, and that's a good thing, but it's a desperate, and you maybe wonder, is it just a temporary sort of trusting in the Lord? Do I really trust in the Lord? We're going to look at that in the, in, in, in the book of Isaiah, chapter, chapter 30. Um, I had a friend that I spoke with this week, and he told me, he said, he said, Randy, you know me, I haven't really been a very religious person in my life. He said, but I, back in 2018, I went to the hospital and I, I thought I was going to die. He's, he's quite a bit older than me. I went to the hospital and I thought I was going to die and my, my sons were around the, the bedside and, and all of a sudden he said, I became the most religious person in, 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 the, in the building. You know, I, I, I really, all of a sudden I really, and I'll use, I'll use my words now, I really, he really, at least at that moment in time, really trusted in the Lord. But I know him. I know him now here in 2022. And, 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 and that, that moment in time where he, where there was tra where tragedy struck, that, that, that came and went in his life. And, um, you know, he, he this, this friend of mine, he would describe himself as a, as a go-getter, a busy person. He had a rough childhood, but it kind of pulled himself up by his own bootstraps kind of a guy. The kind of guy who's always busy working on something. And some of us in this room today, we, we, would, we would smile and we'd wink and be like, you know, that's kind of like me. I'm a, I'm a go-getter. You know, I'm a self-made person. No grass growing under my feet. And, and the... The honest truth is many of us in here in this room today, me included, we, we value busy. We esteem busy. So for a busy person, a person who, who really sort of feeds his or her soul by being busy, I wonder what the words, I, I trust in the Lord, what they mean with that, with that backdrop. So a big question I want us to try and answer today, and it may be a bit of a startling question, but a big question I want us to answer, is it possible that, that the Lord, that God, at moments in our lives, causes us to trust in Him when we, when we wouldn't do so otherwise? I'm going to make a transition now. I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to transition from the word trust in trusting in the Lord to the word rest, resting in the Lord, because that really is born out of the text today. But is it possible that, that, 
that at times God causes us to rest in him when we wouldn't otherwise do so of our own accord. Some of us are too busy to rest in the Lord. Some of us are too preoccupied to be quiet before the Lord. Does he at times capture our attention and force us into periods of rest and quiet? And what if we were to go there voluntarily instead of being forced into that scenario? With that as the backdrop, let's, let's jump into Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, beginning with verse 15. This is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. And I want you to hear this as though he is saying it to you this morning because he is. This is what the sovereign Lord says. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. You said, no, we will, we will flee on horses, therefore you will flee. You said, we will ride off on swift horses. Therefore, your pursuers will be swift. A thousand will flee at the threat of one. At the threat of five, you will all flee away. Till you were left like a flag staff on a mountaintop, like a banner on a hill. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion, for the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. The word of the Lord for which I give Thanks. Today's passage, the very first verse, says this. It says, repentance and rest is where our salvation lies. Repentance and rest. I think we have those two words. Repentance and rest. Another very... um, very appropriate uh, translation of the Hebrew text would, would say, in fact, a number of the translations choose this word, return. The, the Hebrew word is shub, to return, to return to the Lord and to rest in the Lord. God tells us today, that is where your salvation lies. In your, in your returning your repentance, your returning to the Lord, your turning back to the Lord, and in your resting in the Lord. That is where your salvation lies. A friend of mine recently said to me, Randy, he knows I'm a pastor. He's a fishing buddy of mine, but he knows I'm a pastor. He said, we were talking, Jesus always comes up when I, because I'm a pastor and they know it and they think it's, I don't know, cute or quaint or something. So even out fishing, they like to talk about Jesus. They would never come to church, but they like to talk about Jesus. And so they asked me things. What do you think? And so he said to me, he said, this, this thing, salvation, you know, getting saved, that you, you, you and your people talk about. He said, it seems so easy. It seems too easy. You really have to do stuff. I thought you had to, like, do stuff to be saved. You know, you've got to do stuff so you can go to heaven. But this salvation stuff, it, it has to be more complicated than that, Randy. You know, then we catch a fish, and then we talk some more. It has to be more complicated to that than that. And what I would say to you is, my, my fellow believers, my brothers and sisters in Christ, 
what I would say to you is that, that when salvation, in, in God's words, is defined as being repentance and rest, I would say for many of us, that's not easy at all. Like it might be easier to just do some stuff. What the Lord calls us to is, is good. It's good for our souls, but it, it, it is not, in fact, easy to return and to rest. This word rest, it shows up many places throughout the Bible. There are two words that you're probably somewhat familiar with, two Hebrew words, and this is the English transliterations of them, but Shabbat you may, have, you may have run into before, and it simply means, uh, or, or it is translated as Sabbath. In English, we speak of Sabbath, the Sabbath day. And if you have some, some knowledge of the Bible, you know that, that, that for the Israelites, that was the day of rest. That was for them what we would, what we would consider Saturday. And we are New Covenant Christians, and we do not uh, avoid cooking and cleaning on Saturday as Christians, and yet, and yet, there is something about this day of rest that the Lord calls us to, that, that in its spirit, if not in it, the letter of the law, in its spirit, the Lord, the Lord requires of us that we would take this, this moment in time, this day, and, and, and stop all else that we do and, and come together and not forsake gathering together, but being together on Sunday and, and saying of all the things that I could possibly be doing, of all the busyness that I could po possibly uh, strive after, today I'm going to experience this Shabbat, this, this day of rest, this, this community seeking sort of day together. But then there's another word, and, and in the, uh, again, this is just the English translation of it, transliteration of it, but the word, the Hebrew word is Shavat, very, and it simply means rest. That we we rest in the Lord. It's not necessarily limited to a day. In fact, it can it can be an overarching sort of posture and approach that we take to every day of our lives, in which we rest in. The Lord. This was obviously a struggle for the Israelites as it is for us, 21st century Christians. Isaiah 30, we've been, we, we, we read, begin with beginning in verse 15, we, we read several verses just a few moments ago, but look how this chapter actually begins. Isaiah chapter 30, for the sake of time, we're not studying the entire chapter today, but look how it begins. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1. See if you can feel the weight or feel the uh, sense of uh, familiarity with this passage. He says, God says to his, to his nation, to his people, he says, ah, stubborn children, declares the Lord, who carry out a plan, but not my plan. And then he goes on, and we got to verse 15, and we read verse 15, his whole point, God's whole point is, you are living according to a plan. You have a plan for your life, a system, but it's not my plan for your life. It's your own. You carry out a plan, but it's not my plan. To my own shame, just last night, just last night, at one o'clock in the morning, kunk, I, I wake up. I wake up, and uh, this, this is this is relevant to some of you because some of you here actually received this email. Like at one o'clock in the morning, boom, and all of a sudden I'm worried about something. Why? Because I'm living according to my own plan and my own sort of system. We're going to talk more about that here. In a boom, I wake up, and I I'm, I'm compelled to get up and send an email, not an ugly email, not an evil email, but just an email about planning and preparation, some stuff that, got to get, that has to get done. And then I go back to bed, and I'm kind of worked up, and I laid there for a few minutes, and I just prayed, Lord, this is not your way. This is not your system. This is not your kingdom. 
you call me to repentance and rest. And I laid there for a few moments, and the, the, the peace of Christ, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit, it was a real gift. It just overwhelmed me, and I just, I just felt this sense of resting in the Lord, this sense of in God's economy, in God's timing, in God's kingdom, it's going to be okay. And I went back to sleep and I rested well. My, my point is, I'm more like you than you think I am, and I struggle with this resting in the Lord just like you do. The Lord is calling us to live, to rest in His kingdom. I often talk about God's economy and how we live in God's economy, but a better word really would be God's kingdom. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on, in heaven or on earth as it is in heaven. God's kingdom. He's inviting us to live in his kingdom. What do I even mean by that? We, we talk about that all the time, and it's hard to embrace. Um, Dr. Dallas Willard, a Christian philosopher, who's, he's, he's now dead, but... He's, he's worth reading. He's a, he draws from deep, well, deep wells. But Do, Dr. Dallas Willard, he, he refers to the kingdom of God in this way. He says that the kingdom of God is the full range of God's effective will. The full range of God's effective will. And, 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 and God, he invites us in. He draws us in. If we're Christ followers then he compels us. We, we are obligated to live in his kingdom, the, the full range of his effective will. Now, the, the, the challenge is you and I, you have your own little kingdom as well. Your own little kingdom. And you want to live in your kingdom and you want your kingdom to be outside of God's kingdom and you want to have full autonomy, full control. And, and, and maybe that's hard for you to understand. Like the range of, the full range of your effective will. Like your little kingdom. And you have one and maybe you would doubt that. If I could just explain it. Dallas Willard does it this way. I'm, uh, if I could explain it to you in this way. If you would, just for a moment, you have a neighbor next to you. Just reach over and reach your hand into your neighbor's pocket and pull out their change and their car keys. Would you do that? No, I don't, don't really do that. Now, real quickly, because you'll get hit, real quickly, you'll be like, what in the world are you doing? Because why? Because we have this, this little realm, this, 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 this full range of my effective will that is my stuff, and it's, it's my way, and, 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 and it's my space, and, and I don't allow you into, um, this is my kingdom, and I have autonomy in my kingdom. And, and, and God says, ah, oh, stubborn children, you carry out a plan, but it's not my plan. The Lord is inviting us into his kingdom. The Lord has a different kingdom in place in which he invites us to live. And we can be, uh, we, we can worry and and we can fret and be, and be busy all the time. And the fact is, the Lord can cause all of our busyness to amount to nothing. And we wake up tomorrow and we feel like all that busyness, all that worry, all that fret, and I accomplished nothing. And I, I, I'm going to guess that some of you can really relate to that feeling day after day. On the other hand, on the other hand, we can, we can respond to the Lord's invitation and we can rest in Him and he can actually make up the difference. All the loss, all the sense of I'm not getting done what I need to get done. The Lord can, can, can in his kingdom make up. That makes no sense in the natural world in which we live. But we don't live in the natural world. As Christ followers, we live in this supernatural realm known as the kingdom of God. With time, the time that you have, and, and money, the money that you have, your emotional capital, your, your physical energy, all of the stamina that you can muster up. In God's kingdom, I will have what I need if I rest in the Lord. 
I know that's hard to believe, and we don't believe it, and that's why we live in our own kingdom too often. But the Lord inviting us to live in his kingdom, what he's saying is you will have all that you need in the, in, in the form of, of money and time and emotional capital and physical stamina. You will have all that you need. You know, in the Old Testament, it, with, in the, for the nation of Israel, that was the nature of this Sabbath rest. The Lord was saying, look, you, you don't need seven days. I can make up the difference. You just rest. You, you, think you, need, you think you need to work seven days a week. The Lord says, try me. Take a day off and see if I don't make up the difference. It got more radical than that. In the, with, with the nation of Israel, they would let their crops lie fallow one year, like every seventh year. And, 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 the, and the Lord said, look, you just don't even plant, don't even harvest for a full year and watch me, watch that I will make up the difference. That is the Sabbath rest, the Shabbat or the Shabbat. That is the resting in the Lord that he calls us to. That is the nature of it. The Lord says, do a little less and, and, and see if I don't make up the difference. Or he says, be generous with a little more and see if I don't make up the difference. That is, that is his invitation to live in his kingdom or we can continue to live in our own kingdom. Lydia and I spent most of our adult, adult lives as a married couple ministering in the local church, and honestly, most of our lives in Albuquerque uh, and, then, and then back at home, back in the valley here, most of our years, really, uh, of, of being in ministry has, have been spent in um, church planting, young churches, churches getting off the ground, um, and, and so there, there have been periods in our in our uh, in our married life, in our finances, where we would look, where we can look at the bank and say, we haven't we haven't got what we need. We haven't received what we need. We're behind. We haven't received what we need. And and what we can tell you, and it hasn't been easy. And we certainly at times have had our own doubts. But what I can tell you is that the Lord has always, always, always made up the difference as we have rested in the Lord. And he says, I will give you what you need. Rest in me. And there have been, there have been a few times where we, where we look, not recently, but where we look at our account and we say, it looks as though we have more than we need. And in, and in God's kingdom and his economy and his system, needs arise. Maybe an adult child or maybe someone else needs our generosity and and what happens in those days there's never too much there's never too little this is why in the old testament when the israelites would wander out and pick up manna you know that whatever coriander seed type of bread type of whatever it was on the ground every morning because they're in the wilderness there was nothing to eat and the Lord every day would provide manna. They would wake up and magically there was manna on the ground. And they would go and they would, they would, they would harvest it. They would get it and they would take it home and they would eat it for the day. But, but what you may or may not remember about that scenario, that story, is if they kept it, they tried to keep it for more than one day, it, 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 it became rotten and putrid and stinky. And worms would, would thrive in the old manna. Why? Because, again, the Lord was teaching them as he's teaching us, look, in my kingdom, I invite you, the Lord says, into my kingdom, my kingdom of rest, and I will provide for you. Never too much, never too little, I will provide just what you need. Do we trust in the Lord? Or are we just in join the prosperity of our own hands and calling it trust.
think I'm back. If that happens again, I'll grab the other mic. Okay. Um, the next words in, in today's passage are quietness and rest. The Lord says, in quietness and rest is your strength. First he said, in repentance and rest is your salvation. And now he says, in quietness and trust, in quietness and trust is your strength. But we do not believe this, that in quietness, I've got to speak up. I've got to, I've got to make my opinion known. I've got, I've got to... Lord says, in quietness, and in trust is your strength. Everything within me cries out, no, I, I, won't, have any, I won't have any quietness. I won't, I won't have any trust. And certainly the world does not believe that in quietness and trust lies strength. So culturally we reject this notion. And so what does the passage say? You remember what it said. It says that we, that we flee on horses. Now, most of us don't have horses. Most of us don't even know how to ride horses. But we flee. We flee on, on boats and ships and fast cars and jet airplanes. Uh, we, we flee. We run from the notion that in quietness and rest lies our strength. So we are, we are overeducated and overworked and overcaffeinated and, and overstressed and, 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 and in debt. Verse 16, just to... Just by way of review, it says, no, no, we will flee on horses. And the Lord says, therefore, you will flee. You said we will ride off on swift horses. And then he, he speaks this word of prophecy. He says, therefore, your pursuers, enemies would be another, another term, your pursuers will be swift. The implication being swifter than you and more fierce than you. So because we're living in our own kingdom, according to our own strength, according to our own purposes, we trust. We trust in the strength of the back of a horse, uh, in the speed of a stallion, and the, the stealth found in riding a fast horse. And the result is, tragically, the Lord makes our pursuers more swift than are we. And if you believe this passage, then, then it says that the Lord, in those moments, he makes us feeble and, and vulnerable and prone to getting caught. I said this, at least I implied this in the beginning, I'll, I'll say it again. The Lord will cause you, if you're a Christ follower, the Lord will cause you to slow down and rest if you do not do so of your own accord. We could probably tell several stories today to that end. The, the Lord will slow you down if you do not do so voluntarily. And here's the crazy thing. He does it out of his own kindness. He, he does it because he is merciful. I, I believe we have the, the next passage. This is just following what, he, what the Lord just said, that, 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 that because you are, uh, you'll have none of his rest, you, you, you're, instead you're going to just run headlong into uh, your own plan. You're going to jump on a horse. You're going to jump on a plane. You're going to you're going to do it your own way, and you're going to do it at your own pace. And it's going to be a fast pace. And the Lord says, therefore, I'm going to slow you down. I'm going to make your pursuers faster than you. Uh, one of them will come at you, and a thousand of you will flee. Like you're going to be fearful. They're going to have this sort of daunting influence over you. Why? Because the Lord hates us? No, because the Lord loves us. Because then it goes on and it says, yet, yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion for the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those 
who wait for him. Again, the crazy thing is when the Lord slows you down, when the Lord draws you, sometimes not of your own accord, draws you into seasons of rest, he does so out of his own kindness, out of his own mercy. He will cause you to slow down. I don't know, maybe, maybe you strain it back. Maybe you go down sick with mono. Maybe you break a leg. And I, I certainly hope none of that or anything even more tragic ever happens to you. But ultimately, the point is our God is gracious and merciful and a God of blessing. And he says, blessed are those who wait on me. The Lord says it. At times he says, blessed are those whom I cause, whom I even force to wait on me. So my invitation to you this morning is how is to is to consider how you might slow down and rest. To consider how you might return to the Lord in really practical ways. The way, the way that you build other things, your gym time, you know, or your your Starbucks run, or, or or whatever it is that feeds you in some way. My invitation to you today is to consider how you might build into your day, returning to the Lord and resting in the Lord and being quiet before the Lord and trusting in the Lord. Now, something that we, uh, the men that, that I meet with um, on Wednesdays, we, we meet together and we talk about our, our Bible reading for that week and and just, just do life together as, as brothers in Christ. One of the things that we've talked about in recent months is, is resting really a New Testament concept. This is something that Jesus taught. You know, we don't, we don't practice the Sabbath, certainly not in the way that, that the Old Testament um, followers, uh, children of, of God, were, were called to do. And so are we even called to rest? Are we obligated to rest? And I would say that we are um, not obligated to, as New Testament, uh, New Covenant Christians, we're not obligated to, uh, on Saturday, not turn on the light switch or not turn on the oven or, or, or not uh, mow the ground. I, I, might, I don't. But I do believe that with just as much zeal and compassion, the Lord calls us to rest in Him. In 21st century, and with just the same compassion and zeal, he calls us to a Shabbat, a Sabbath in the sense that he calls us together to worship. He calls us to not forsake the gathering together as a body of believers on Sunday morning. Listen to the invitation of Jesus in Matthew 28. This is an Old Testament. This is Jesus. He says, come to me, all who, are lab all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and I am lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And if you read the life and times of Jesus during his, um, his three plus decades on this earth, you just get a sense that he was a person who rested. He was a person, the God-man, who listened to his father's voice, rested trusted, was quiet before the Lord, his, his heavenly Father. And in doing so, he calls us to the same life. So in closing, God wants 
rest for you. It is what is best for you. Resting in the Lord. I'm not talking about a vacation. Maybe we all need a vacation. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a weekend on the island. Maybe that'd be good for you. Maybe that'd be good for me. But that's not, I'm not talking about you know, uh, me time or a weekend to myself. What we're talking about is so much more profound than that. We're talking about waiting on the Lord and resting in the Lord rather than rushing ahead in my own little kingdom. Oh God, may your, may your kingdom come and may your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. Amen. Let us pray. I'm going to talk to you for just a moment before we pray, but if you would bow your heads just to really focus and also just to respect the privacy of your neighbor around you, if you would just bow your head. I would ask you, um, and I don't want you to answer out loud, but I would just ask you, is this a struggle that you have? Is this, this, this living in your own kingdom in a frantic way, in a furious way, in a fast way, in a busy way, in a, in a way that lacks rest. Is that your, is that your style? Is that, is that the rhythm to your life? And if it is, I invite you today to, to repent of that, which means simply to, to turn back to the Lord. So I, I'm going to give you just a few seconds here to, to be quiet before the Lord and to tell him to speak of your, your desire to repent and to turn back to the Lord and to rest in him. So I'm going to be quiet here for a few moments and if you would just pray on your own to the Lord and tell him, tell him how you feel. Let's pray. Lord, we want to trust you today. We want to trust you to the degree that we will rest in you. I want that for my own life. So I pray that personally for me. And I pray that for us collectively as a, as a group of friends, as a body of believers. May we find our rest in you. We repent today of our, of our prideful ways, of our desire to live in our own little kingdom. We repent of that today and we, we welcome your kingdom. We, we trust you to the degree that we want to live in your kingdom. May it come down and, and cover us all. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen.